So uh, anytime you are required to prepare the ledger accounts, I want you to be very keen on how I'm going to prepare mine so that you can be able to duplicate what I'm doing in your own work. First thing, the ledger accounts, they are supposed to be very neat. You need to prepare them in a very neat way. You avoid a lot of erasing, a lot of counseling. Uh, use a ruler to draw those ledger accounts and then make sure that your work is well aligned. Your work is very well aligned so that anybody who is following your work, it is going to be very easy for that person to mark your, uh, your work. Also, always remember to write the dates. Always remember to write the dates. When maybe a, a, a teacher or a lecturer is marking your work, the dates are actually going to assist him or her to mark your work. Because if you tell me this is the transaction of date six, you have debited this account, I'm actually going to go to the other account and look or find for the same date and see whether you have uh, credited or debited the other account. So always write the date of the transaction. Many of you are just writing the name of the other accounts without actually uh, recording the dates. It becomes very hard to mark that particular work. So the moment you have the date, I will actually go back to the question and look at that particular date and read the statement and actually confirm whether the entries were supposed to be entered the way you have entered. So dates are very, very crucial. The other thing, make sure you don't have a lot of uh, counseling of your work. Make your work to be very tidy always use a ruler and always have uh, your work well aligned. And uh, when I'm saying that it is well aligned, when it becomes to arrange accounts, the figures should be on a straight line downwards. Don't have a, a figure is very far to the left. The other one is uh, at the middle, the other one. Make sure that they are very straight downwards so that even when you are adding, somebody will uh, actually see that this is what you added for you to get this particular, particular figure. So let's go. We are told that uh, uh, Joseph started business on 1st May 2019 with a capital of 200,000 in the bank. So that statement alone, it is requiring ledger accounts to be prepared. So the capital and that capital is in the bank. So obviously we shall have to open an account for capital. We shall have the capital account. we have the capital account. The other account that will be affected is the bank account. Again, always indicate the debit side and the credit side and don't interchange. Don't say that this side is the credit and this one is the debit. Always the left hand side is the debit, the right hand side is the credit. So in that particular transaction, capital is always credited. Whenever capital is being introduced to the business, capital is always going to be credited. So just come here and you say this is on May 1st. This capital is in the bank. And the capital is actually 200,000. So it must be credited. It must be. You, may, yes. may I ask a question? Yes, ask. Okay, good. I think that this is where uh, the critical aspect is. Eh? Yes. Uh, now I can see it uh, is uh, depositing by check. So, regardless of whether it is cash or not, the capital is always credited. Capital is always credited. Okay. When it is being introduced, it is credited. Either it is in bank, you write here bank. If it is in cash, you write here cash, eh? but the account is, okay. is credited. Okay. Okay, thank you. And then, because this capital is in the bank and the bank is an asset, we come here and we write the same date, May 1st, the bank is receiving money and that money is coming as capital of 200,000. So bank, remember, is an asset. So anytime it is increasing or it is receiving money, it is always debited. And again here, because I saw some of you doing that mistake, 
if it is in the bank, you cannot write here the same bank, the, 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 the word bank. So you write here the name of the other account that is affected by the same transaction. Others were writing here bank account and then they write here bank 200. It cannot happen. Eh? So if I'm marking your work, uh, you have said that uh, there is bank capital, uh, money is coming in as capital. I will just go and find out where is the other May one and I must get this in the capital account because you have written here, the other account is capital. So I will just proceed to the capital account and find out whether in May one, it has been credited by bank because bank was debited by capital and for us to have a, a double entry then capital must be credited we cannot have a debit here and a debit on the capital if bank has been debited obviously capital is supposed to be credited so i just find the date here and i confirm whether you have written bank which is the name of the other account Malimu, can i ask a question yes ask uh, Suppose the capital is coming from the personal savings, how do you deal with that, especially on the, the, the two accounts? Okay. Capital, capital will always come into the business in two ways. Eh? Either it is coming in in form of cash or in form of bank. So if it is personal savings, then the proprietor will either deposit that money in the bank account, that is where we shall have the bank account, or those personal savings are going to be brought into the business in form of cash, cash itself. You put that money in the cash box of the business and therefore we shall have the cash account. So even if it is personal saving, that money is either deposited in the bank, so we shall have the bank account, or that money will be in form of cash in the business, so we shall have the cash account. Have I answered your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Just a minute.
Okay, sorry for that interruption. We can uh, move on. So we were on the transaction that occurred on May 2nd, which is on uh, bought goods for 15,000 paying by check. So anytime goods are bought into the business, and when we are talking about goods here, we mean anytime we are bringing in additional stock. Goods is additional stock. Anytime we are bringing in additional stock, that particular transaction is supposed to be recorded in uh, an account called purchases. We are supposed to record them in the purchases account. So, and the purchases account is actually supposed to be debited always. Anytime goods are coming in, come here and open the purchases account. And this account, whenever we have additional goods coming into the business, we debit this account. So this account is going to be debited with three items. You debit it with either of the following three. Either you buy goods by check, so you shall debit bank here. If you buy goods by cash, you shall debit the purchases by cash. And if you buy goods on credit, you shall debit here by the name of the supplier. So you either debit purchases account using the bank account if you paid by check, cash account if you paid by cash, or you debit by the name of the supplier. So in this case, the goods that were bought by check. So we shall debit purchases by bank. Remember, always purchases is supposed to be debited unless we are taking goods from the business for personal use. But if goods are being acquired by the business, always debit the purchases account. So come here and record. This is May 2nd. The goods, they are affecting money in the bank and uh, they were worth 15,000. So meaning that this transaction, because we paid by check, it is reducing the money in the bank. So we needed to go to our bank account that we had opened. And then we say here on May 2nd, this money is reducing. Remember we said bank account, whenever money is received, you debit. Whenever money is moving out or wherever we are paying money by check, we credit. So we shall come here and we say May 2nd, we credit by purchases because the other transaction has been entered in the purchases account. And you write here, 15,000, like that. We go to the next transaction which occurred on fourth, where we are told we withdrew 75,000 from the bank for business use. Anytime money is withdrawn from the bank for business use, or it is withdrawn for office use, that money is taken to the cash. It is taken to the cash account, or it is taken to the cash box. So it is actually money being removed or uh, withdrawn from the bank and then taken to cash. Therefore, the other account that is going to be affected is known as the cash account. We don't have the business use account. The other account that we shall record that transaction is the cash account. So open your cash account. Say this is the credit side. This is the debit side. Remember the cash is an asset. So whenever it is being received, whenever cash is received, you debit the cash account. Whenever cash is being spent, we credit the cash account. So in this case, cash is receiving money. This is on May 4th cash is receiving money and that money is coming from the bank. So because it is receiving, we debit, and the amount of money that was received was 75,000. Then we go to the bank account. Uh, we go to the bank account. To the bank account, money is moving out. And whenever money is moving out of this account, we normally credit, you say here on fourth, you write here, the money is moving to cash, 75,000. At this point, I hope you have understood. Debiting bank is money being received or money being deposited in the bank. 
crediting bank is money being spent or money being withdrawn from the bank. Like Mwane that. Mo, yes. Uh, at what point do we open the drawings account? Because I'm getting confused. Okay. Last question, yeah, because I thought we are supposed to debit the drawings when okay. the money is withdrawn from. Okay, I don't know. This is for more business use. Can you explain? Okay, let me explain. Huh? So drawings they only arise. Drawings only arise when money or uh, goods meant for business are uh, taken for personal use. Anywhere you find that goods or money has been uh, taken for personal, and I mean here personal use, that is where we record drawings. But if it is business use, that amount of money or that particular item, it is still in the business. It is not drawings. So just note that drawings only when it is for personal use. If it is for business use, it is taken to cash. If it is for office use, it is cash. For personal use, drawings. Are we together there? Yes, Malin. Thank you. Okay, Karim. Yeah, thank you. I think it's a bit clear, more clearer. I think I had a, an issue with that as well. Okay, okay. Now you understand. Mm, okay. Okay, okay. On May 5th, bought goods for 25,000 on credit. So those are goods that are being bought. Remember that is additional stock, as we said. And uh, whenever you are bringing in additional stock, we normally debit the purchases account. We normally debit the purchases account. So we shall come here and you say on May 5th, we have more goods. That is why we are debiting purchases. And this time, these goods have been acquired on credit. So no cash has been spent. No money in the bank has been spent. But we have created a liability. We have created a debt of 25000 to Juma. So we normally write the name of the supplier, Juma, 25,000. So this is a supplier and is a creditor. So we shall proceed and open the account for that particular supplier. So we shall come here and open Juma account so that we can be able to monitor that particular liability. So we have the credit, we have the debit. Juma, remember, is a a liability and whenever liabilities are being created whenever we create a liability we normally credit that liability we normally credit that liability and in this case we shall come here and you say on the credit side may 5th we created a liability as a result of purchases that we made from this particular person and they were worth 25000 shillings like that then on May 6th, sold goods worth 10,000 on credit to Saman. So at this point, I also want to add something here. When goods are being acquired, they are debited in the purchases account. When the same goods are being sold to customers, they are normally credited in sales account. So anytime we sell goods, we should open sales account. Anytime goods are sold, we should come here and open the sales account. And then this account is the opposite of purchases. When we debit purchases always, sales account is always credited. So we shall come here and you say, on May 6th, these goods, remember you can sell goods in three ways. Eh? You can sell goods and receive a check. You can sell goods and receive money by cash. Or you can sell goods on credit. So on the sales account, either we are going to credit that account by check if goods were sold and money was received in form of a check. We credit the sales by cash if we sold goods on cash basis or we credit sell by the name of the customer if we sold them on credit. Like in this case, we sold them on credit to a customer known as Samar. 
So we shall write here the name of the customer who is Samar, and we say Samar has our money, 10,000. So Samar, we normally refer to him as Adepta. So at this point also, I want you to understand Adepta and Accreditor. Adepta, Adepta will arise as a result of credit sales. Just a minute. So I was explaining this, that whenever sales is being made, you either credit that account by the name of the customer if sales were made on credit, by cash account if they were made by cash, or by bank if they were sold and money was received in the form of a check. So any customer or any name of a person who, which will be appearing on the credit side of a sales, anybody, if we write the name of a person on the credit side of sales, that person is a debtor and we need to open the account for that particular person. So in this case, we need to open an account for Samar. We need to open an account for Samar and Samar because is a debtor. Remember a debtor is a person with our money and because he has our money, that particular person is a, an asset to the business because he has business resources. It is a, an asset. So we should come here and say this is on May uh, 6th. We created this particular debtor as a result of sales that was made to him and it is uh, of 10,000 like that. Then we go to eighth. Eighth says that bought furniture for 8,000 by cash. Bought furniture. Remember here, don't mix goods and uh, uh, furnitures, motor vehicles, equipments, and all that. A furniture is not a good. It is not a stock. And therefore, it cannot be recorded in the purchasing account. That is not part of stock and therefore it cannot be recorded in purchases. Purchases, we only record stock items. Therefore, whenever we buy a fixed asset to the business, we normally open an account for that particular fixed asset. So we need to come here and open an account for furniture. Never record a fixed asset in the purchases account because it is not part of stock. We are not buying it with the intention of selling. So we shall come here and you say, this is on uh, May 8. You just say, how was it bought? It was bought using cash. And this cash was of 8,000. And then we locate where we have our cash account. In this case now, cash is reducing, money is moving out to pay for the furniture. Therefore, it should be credited. You write here, May 8, money is going to finance furniture, and it is 8,000, like that. On 9th, paid rent. Rent falls under the items we call expenses. These are expenses, and any time we pay for expenses, we need to come and have an account for that particular expense. So we need to have an account for rent expense. 
rent expense. And in this case, this account should be debited. Anytime you pay rent, remember we said this is a temporary asset that you are acquiring for a very short period of time. So you debit this account uh, and it is actually by cash. You write here on May 9th, we paid this rent by cash and it is 3,000. So the moment you write cash here, you need to go to your cash account and you find out, are we supposed to debit or credit? We need to credit this account because money is moving out. And then we say it is moving out to pay rent, 3,000. Then on 11th, we paid wages. Wages is another expense to the business. Remember here, you need to understand what is an expense to the business. Eh? An expense is any money we spend on other items other than purchases and fixed assets. Any other source of expenditure is an expense, apart from money meant to acquire additional stock, that is purchases, or meant to acquire fixed assets, the vehicles, the furniture, and all that. All the others are referred as the expenses. So wages is an expense, and we need to have an account for it. We need to come here and open an account for wages. Wages account. Being an expense, it is, should be debited. And this one was paid by check. So just come here and debit May 11. It was paid by check, so it is affecting money in the bank. And the wages were 14,000. Meaning that in our bank account, money has reduced by 14,000. So we go to that account, and because it is cash outflow, money moving out, we record it on the credit side. So we say here on 11th, money was spent on wages, 14,000. We go to the next transaction uh, that is on uh, 13th, paid insurance. Remember, insurance is also an expense, but we need to have its own account. So we come here and say we need to have an account for insurance. Insurance account. Insurance account being an expense should be debited. And here you write this is on May, May 13th. This expense was paid using cash. So it is going to affect cash and it was worth 4,000. So we locate where we have our cash account and this is money moving out. On 13th, it is moving out to pay insurance of 4,000. Then on 14th, sold goods on credit for 5,000 to Simon. Remember we are selling goods then we need to go to sales account. Let us locate our sales account. Let us locate our sales account and we credit. Remember sales account is always credited. So we shall come here and you say this is on 14th. We sold to a customer known as Simon. So Simon is a adapter and a uh, adapter of 5,000 shillings, or he has 5,000 worth of resources to the business. And then we go forward and open an account for Simon. We open an account for Simon.
So Simon here, it, it should be debited because it's adapter, remember? Any customer who buys goods on credit is adapter, and therefore we debit that particular account. And they say this is on May 14th. This debtor is being created as a result of sales. And the sales is of uh, 5,000. Then on uh, 15th, paid Juma 23,500 by check, clearing his account after receiving a discount of 1,500. If you look at that particular statement and you go backwards on a transaction that occurred on May 5th, we bought goods for 25,000 on credit from Juma. So we owe, we owe Juma 25,000. But in this case, we are told that we paid Juma 23,500 and actually we cleared that debt. We cleared that debt. The debt was cleared because we paid 23,500 and we received a discount of 1,500. So 1,500 plus 23,500 is giving us 25,000. So this is how we are supposed to record that transaction. We need to locate the account for Juma. We need to find Juma actually is here. Remember, whenever we credit the name of a, a person, eh? we credit an account of a person. In this case, we have credited Juma. This simply means that it is adept. Anytime we are debiting the name of a person, it simply means that that person is the one who is supposed to pay us. So in this case, we have uh, received 23,500 because it is reducing the liability. Whenever the liabilities are reducing, we normally debit that account for that liability. So we need to debit Juma because we are reducing that particular liability. So we need to come here and we say we paid by check. This is on May. This is on May 15th. We paid Juma, therefore it is affecting our money in the bank. And we paid 25, 23, sorry. 23,500 is what will be reduced from a bank account. I want you to remember what we said when we were starting the ledgers. Whenever we have credited amount and then we debit another uh, the same account, if we credit an account and then we go ahead on a different date we credit, it simply means that we are actually subtracting. Eh? In accounting, debiting and crediting is all about subtracting. So if we had credited 25,000, it means that we had incurred a liability of 25,000. So if we pay, we are supposed to subtract that debt or liability. That's why we are debiting. And note that whenever liabilities are decreasing or reducing, we normally debit the account. But for the assets, whenever they are reducing, we normally credit. That's why if you go to an account like bank or cash, whenever cash is increasing, we normally debit the cash. But when cash is moving out of the business, we credit because it's a subtraction. For the liabilities, it is the opposite. Whenever liabilities are increasing, we normally credit them. And when now they are reducing, we normally debit them. That's why we are actually doing this. That's why we are doing this. Let me locate Juma. That's why it was a liability of 25,000. That's why it was credited. Now we are reducing by 23,500. That is not enough. This account was cleared and therefore it should have near balance. The difference between this and this is 1,500. And that 1,500 is what we were given. On the same date, we were given a discount. That one we call discount received. We received a discount of 1500. This is a discount received. So we need to go ahead and open an account for that. Discount received. Discount received is that I can income to the business because we have made some savings. Because we have made some savings, we consider that one as an income. Discount received. Discount received. 
this account is actually supposed to be credited. Any income, whenever we have a source of income, that income is normally credited. So we need to come here and you say it was on uh, 15th, May 15th. It was a discount that was received from Juma. You write here the person who has given you the discount and then you write here the amount of that discount. So it simply means that Juma gave us a discount of 1500 and actually that amount is in the account of Juma. It is in the account of Juma debit and then we credit the discount received because it is considered as an income. Incomes are normally credited and actually that's why also sales is credited because it is a source of income to the business. Then on the 17th, bought goods on credit from Jacob. Anytime you find the word bought goods, it should go to the purchases. It should go to the purchases account. So let me locate my purchases account. It is here. We say this is on 17th. We bought goods on credit from a person called Jacob. Sorry, Jacob. And the amount is 7,500. And then we need to open an account for Jacob because this is a new supplier. Every supplier will have its own account. So just open Jacob account. Being a creditor, remember a creditor is the person who has given you credit. Eh? You come here, you record it on the credit side. Come here, record it on the credit side. Say it was on May. Uh, 17th and this liability was created as a result of purchases and actually the debt is 7500 or the liability is 7500 then uh, on 19th samar returned goods worth 2000 to the business remember samar we had uh, sold goods to him eh? Let me locate that Samar. I think there is an account for Samar somewhere. It is here. We had sold goods to him, but now Samar has decided to return goods of 2000. Maybe they were not of the right quality. They were not of the right size, whichever the reasons that can be cited, but the goods have been returned. Once Samar has returned the goods, he, or, he is actually reducing this debt because we cannot go ahead and charge Samar the goods that he has returned back to the business. So this debt is actually reducing or this debtor is reducing his balance. And therefore, we minus by crediting this account. We minus by crediting this account. So goods that were once sold, and now they have been returned into the business, they are known as sales returns. This is on May 19. Right here, sales. sales returns 2000 yes yes sorry i think my network connection had an issue i i, I missed out on the point where you said yes that the goods that are returned once goods are returned yes how do you treat that kindly if you can repeat so once goods have been returned they are supposed to be entered in an account called sales returns. They are supposed to be recorded in an account called sales returns. So because the debtor was initially debited when goods were sold to him, when that particular customer returns the good, you reduce, you minus the debt by crediting that particular customer. In this case, we sold goods to Samar 10,000. 
he has decided to return goods of 2000 so we record them in an account called sales returns and sales returns are also known as return inwards so we shall create an account for that we have an account where goods that are returned by the customers are recorded and that account is known as sales returns so we shall reduce by 2000 and we will say that this amount is going to be taken to the sales returns and therefore we open a sales returns account we open the sales returns account this account is always going to be debited this account is always going to be debited and you debit using the name of the customer who has returned those goods so here we shall come here and you say this is on may 19 on this date the person who returned those goods is known as samar and he returned goods of 2000 so this account is purely meant to record goods that have been returned and actually we debit this account. So it is always going to be debited by the name of the customers who have returned the goods. And then we credit the customer to reduce the amount that was initially debited in the account. Then on 20th, on 20th we are told, deposited 2,500 cash into the business bank account. That is money taken from cash to bank so bank is the one that is receiving so you say on 20th and it is receiving money from cash remember we said whenever assets are receiving we debit so it is receiving uh, 2500 2500 from cash on the same date cash is reducing because money has been taken to the bank so we come here and you say on 20th it is a decrease so decrease in cash we credit and you say that money has been taken to the bank 2500 has been taken to the bank 2500 like that then we go to 22nd where we are told we have got cash sales that is the same as goods that were sold on cash basis. So on the cash side, money is being received because when you sell goods, you receive money and this money is received in cash form. So we shall debit because this is money coming in. We write here on 22nd, money is coming from sales of 10,000. So it is money coming in 10,000. And then we know sales account is always credited. Sales account is always credited as we have said. Let me locate it. So we shall come here and you say we sold the goods. Therefore, we credit this and we say by cash 10,000. By cash 10,000. Then we go to... 23rd received a rent of 8,000 by check from the business premises. I understand we had opened an account for rent, but the rent account that we opened, that rent account, This rent that we opened here, this rent account was for an expense. But the business has got some investment somewhere or some building somewhere uh, where rent is actually being received from. We cannot mix the two. We cannot mix the two. So this account, this first account is rent expense. Then we need to open another account and we call it rent income. Rent income account or rent receivable account. 
the two are different. Rent paid and rent received, they are not the same. You record them in different account. And remember, as I told you, any source of income to the business, it is normally credited. Any source of income to the business is normally credited. So we shall come here and we say on 23rd, this is May 23rd, this rent was received by check. So it is going to be deposited in the bank, 8,000. Therefore, our bank balance is increasing. And if it is increasing, we debit bank. On the 23rd, this is a rent income. You can call it rent income. You can call it rent received account. Both are applicable like that. 25th, Simon returned goods worth. Madam. Yes, yes. Sorry, let me just interrupt. Yes. Um, at some point, I think my network was not so clear. Yes. On the construction of uh, May 22nd. Yes. Cash sales of uh, Kenya shillings 10,000. Yes. Uh, we credit the cash. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. When we credit cash, we mean that money is moving out. Eh? Okay. We cannot credit. In this case, we sold goods and uh, we received cash. Eh? Okay. Yes, yes. Cash is going to be debited because it is money received. And okay. we credit sales. Uh, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, we were on the 25th where we are told that Simon returned goods worth 8,000 back to the business. So Simon, we had sold goods to Simon on May 14th. We had sold goods to Simon, and now Simon is returning some goods back. And the goods that are being returned are worth 800. That is what we called sales returns. That is what we called sales returns. So we need to locate the account for Simon. Sorry, Mwalimu, uh, can I take you back on this transaction, if you don't mind, uh, 23rd? Yes. So yes. receive the rent of 8,000 by check. So you're saying we credit uh, rent you, and, you... and then we debit check the bank. Yes. But yes. Note, uh, note, don't, yeah. don't open an account and call it rent. Eh? Don't open another one, call it rent. Just make sure you include the word rent income or rent receivable. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so that you differentiate it from the other rent expense account. Eh? Okay. So this rent is going to be known as rent income or receivable mm -hmm. account. And it is now a revenue, a source of revenue, which should be credited. Eh? Whereas the okay. other rent is an expense, it should be debited. Eh? Okay. Okay. So there are two rent accounts. Yes. We have got rent expense account, which is always debited, mm -hmm. and we have got rent income or rent receivable, which is always credited. Both are not the same. Eh? They are not the same. You cannot record those figures in the same account. You treat them differently. Okay. I hope it is clear because uh, we are yeah. going we are going to meet this in the future eh? rent expense and rent income and when we are preparing the accounting statements and then we should be able to differentiate that rent payable is an expense debited rent receivable is an mm -hmm. income it should be credited and those are two very separate accounts uh huh then now we go to 25th, Simon returned goods of 800. I'm locating the account for Simon. It is here. We had sold goods to him on 14th. 
worth 5,000, but now Simon is returning goods worth 800 back to the business. Those goods of 800, uh, we are going to minus from this 5,000. So we normally credit the customer when he returns the goods. So we shall say this one occurred on May 25th, and this is what we call sales returns of 800. So they are reducing this. Remember, whenever we have got a figure on debit and the other one on credit, we are subtracting them. Eh? So we are subtracting 800 from 5,000. And then we take this to the sales returns account. There is an account we said is maintained for recording goods that are returned back to the business. It is here, sales returns. So we say here on 25th, another customer has returned and this one is Simon who has returned goods worth 800, like that. Then we go to 26th, 26th, paid electricity, that is an expense. That is an expense directory, we open that account Electricity account, as we said, expenses are normally debited. Expenses are normally debited. So we shall come here and debit this by cash because it was paid by cash. So we come here and say May 26, this one was paid by cash and it was 900 shillings. Then on 27, goods worth 1,000 were returned to Jacob. So if you can locate the account for Jacob. Are we going to um, credit cash on the electricity? Okay, okay. actually I was almost forgetting. Thank you for reminding. Yes, cash is supposed to be credited. That is on 26th. And you say you credit because it is reducing the cash. Eh? So it is reducing to pay electricity of 900. Yes, thank you. That one was a brand. Then we go on the 27th, we return the goods to Jacob. So if we are returning goods to Jacob, then we must have purchased from him. It is here actually on 17th, we purchased the goods of 7,500 from Jacob. And now we are returning goods worth a thousand to him. Those goods which were initially purchased, now they are being returned. They are known as purchases returns. They are known as purchases returns, and they are supposed to be recorded in an account called the purchases returns account. So we needed to come here and you say on May 27th, we made purchases returns to Jacob. So you write here purchases, returns of 1,000 to Jacob. And then we go ahead and open an account called purchases returns account. Purchases returns account. This account is now going to be credited. This one is always credited. Purchases we debit, but purchases returns we credit. Sales we credit, but sales returns we debit. They are actually the opposite of one another. So we shall come here and you say on May 27th, we made purchases returns to Jacob. So you write here the name of the supplier and the value of the goods that were returned, 1,000. Then on 28th, Samar paid 7,000 cash after being allowed a discount of 1,000. So let us locate an account for that customer, Samar. There is a customer by the name Samar.
yes it is here samar this is actually how the account for samar appears and actually you can be able to interpret it it simply means that on 6th we sold goods worth 10000 to samar on 19th samar returned that's why we have got sales returns on 19th he returned goods worth 2000 therefore as at that date on 19th samar was supposed to pay us 8000 10,000 minus this 2,000. He was supposed to pay us 8,000. Then now we are told on 28th, Samar paid 7,000. Samar paid 7,000 and he was given a discount by the business of 1,000. So anytime the debtor is reducing the balance, this is on May 27, you normally credit. You don't debit the debtor when the debtor is paying because if you debit you are increasing and in this case we are supposed to reduce the the debt so you write here he paid by cash he paid by cash this is what we received seven thousand and then we gave the customer a thousand shillings discount so out of this ten thousand again we have got a discount that has been allowed to him so it is reducing the debt. So we come here and also record that discount. Uh, discount actually allowed. This is discount allowed of 1,000. Discount allowed of 1,000. So on the credit side of the debtor, we normally record the decrease, the, the reason as to why the debt is decreasing. The reason as to why the debt is decreasing like that. It is decreasing as a result of returns, decreasing as a result of the cash payment, decreasing as a result of the discount that we allowed. And actually, if you can look at it, this account has been settled. Malim, that date. Yes. Is it May 27th or 20th? The transaction is on May 28th. OK. Oh, OK, yes, yes, I've seen, I've seen. Uh -huh. So Malim, if, if discount is allowed, I thought then from for this person, he should, it's like he he has his money back. So why are we crediting and not? I'm just trying to understand. I thought it would be one would be on the credit and the other one on the debit. Okay, let me let me come there. Uh, uh, just ask the question, please, again, so that I can be able to answer it. Just, just clarify on the discount mm -hmm. for Samal that, has, that was allowed. Um, I don't know why. I thought one would be on the credit and the other one on the debit, but I can see all the transactions are in the same place. Okay. We shall, actually, yeah. we shall record the, the debit. Eh? We must put mm -hmm. them on the debit. Like in this case, eh? first of all, see, there was cash that was received. Eh? Seven yeah. We need to go to cash and debit cash account by 7,000. And then we need to open an account called discount allowed account. And then we debit that account again by 1,000. Actually, this is the reason. Eh? Once the customer has uh, received goods of a certain value, in this case, 10,000, if we allow that particular customer a discount, it simply means that the debt the customer had is going to be reduced the debt the customer has is going to be reduced by that value of the discount. And that's why we are actually, that's why we are actually crediting the customer because what 10,000 is being reduced by 1,000, which is actually the discount. I don't know whether I have able to answer that question. Mwali Mobesi, another one then. Uh, you are dead say discount received is credited. Yes. And discount allowed is debited or what? Yes, no. debited. The, the other, let, let us actually record them in the other account so that we can complete the double so that you can see. For the, Please. Let us go to the cash account. Cash account. Cash account will be debited because that is money coming in because the debtor is paying. On 28th, we write here it is coming from Samar. And what we received is only 7,000. Then 
we shall have to create an account called discount allowed. We shall have to open an account called discount allowed. Discount allowed is actually an expense to the business because it is denying the business money that it could have received. So this account is normally debited. Remember I said discount received is treated as an income because when we receive a discount from a supplier, we are saving. So to the business is like an income. But discount allowed, we are the people who are giving the discount to our customers. So the customer is going to pay less. So in one way or another, we are losing some money. And that's why it is normally debited the same way expenses are debited. So you will come here and you say on May 28th, we allowed the discount to Samar of 1,000. Is it now understood? Yes. Kidogo, kidogo. Yes, even if we in a far kuwa, eh? Kidogo, kidogo. The, the customer we credit, eh? we credit the customer because it is reducing, because it is reducing the debt. Then we debit the discount allowed because it is a, a, an expense, it is, all, it is denying the business an income. Malimu. Yes. I might have gone ahead, but uh, I remember you told us uh, the discount accounts are not balanced, right? In the cash book, eh? Yes. In the cash book, they are not balanced, but here, in the ledger mm -hmm. accounts, they are balanced. Eh? Okay, now my question is, if they're balanced in the ledger account, yes. remember we are supposed to be recording the, the double entry. Yes. So in this case, the double entry has applied on the... On the Samar. Um, Yes, on Samal and, and discount. on cash. You know, we have got uh, three accounts that have been affected here. Yes. We have the account for Samal. Mm -hmm. We have the account for discount allowed. And yes. we have the account for cash. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So for cash, we only record what we received, yeah? which is 7,000. Okay. The 1,000 was never received. It was, yes. it was actually allowed. A discount was allowed to that customer. So the customer would never pay us that money. So okay. that money is normally considered discount allowed and it should be debited to the discount allowed account. Okay, so. Okay. Malimu, what you're saying? Yes. Anytime we have a discount given or discount received or allowed, Yes. We, are, we need to have three accounts. Yes. Whenever there is a disc, not necessarily. If the statement says that money has been received at the same time discount was allowed, we must have three accounts. Huh? And uh, obviously, obviously, there is no way a person can get a discount if that person has not paid. The person must pay. Remember, in accounting, we only talk about what we call the cash discounts. And the cash discounts, they normally arise when the customer has paid on time. Hmm? When the customer has paid on time. So he must pay on time for that particular to, for that particular customer to receive the discount. So in, in a, like every kind of a situation, you'll find that three accounts are going to be involved. Three accounts are going to be involved. One is the account of the debtor. Two is either cash or bank. Then three is the discount allowed. Understood? Okay, okay. <laughs> so now we go to which date on the 29th bought goods paying by check so i said there anytime goods are bought record them in the purchases account so we need to locate our purchases account 
we need to locate our purchases account. Yes, it is here. And this account will be debited by the goods that have been bought. Bought goods paying by check, this is on 29. You come here and you just write bank. And uh, the amount is 2,500. Then we go to bank account because the money in the bank has been used to finance the purchases. So it is reducing. We come here, this is on 29th and it is reducing as a result of the purchases of 2,500 that were made. Then lastly, bought an equipment. Equipment is not good, so it cannot be recorded in purchases. It can only be recorded in equipment account. So that is an fixed asset. Go ahead and record it in equipment. Go ahead and record it in equipment account. And because it is an asset, whenever an asset is being acquired, whenever an asset is coming into the business, we normally debit that asset account. So we will come here and say this is on May 30th. This has been financed by check, so it is affecting bank balance. 12,000. 500. So we go to the bank and reduce our balance by that amount. We say here on that year, it reduced as a result of equipment that we acquired of 12,500. And that is how we post them. The equipment. Question on the equipment. Yes, yes. Uh, sometimes you find that uh, uh, if, if, if the question says bought computers yes. or uh, bought uh, the computers at desktops or bought laptops or uh, purchased uh, software, let's, let's take an example like it's an exam. So uh, you open an account for, for each and every particular item that is mentioned, unless it's mentioned as equipment, right? Yes. If it is computer, you open computer account. Huh? If it okay. is machinery, you open a machinery account. Huh? If it is ah. furniture, you open furniture account. Okay. Yes. Okay, so thank you. Kariba. Up to that point, anybody with a question? And if it's land, is there an account for land? Yes, land account. Land account too. Yeah. And if they say they have expensed it uh, immediately, what happens? If you buy laptop and you expense the whole of it, you don't want to do depreciation or something. I don't know. How do you treat that? You buy it and you would do it what once? It it is expense. It's it's not put in a manner that it's uh, it's depreciated, but it's expense, and that is it. I don't know. You buy yeah. and then immediately. You 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 dis you Disco as in you, you issue it out without without uh, taking it as an asset. How is that treated? Okay, uh, I'm trying to understand. Eh? You have bought it on higher purchase. It's on uh, uh, it's bought and then it's issued out to it you issued buy out and to staff. Yes, you buy an expense. You buy. You see, when you buy and when you sell something as second hand, it's already depreciated. Ata kama ni sai sai tu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to understand that concept. Eh? You buy yeah. you buy a computer right now. Yes. And then you give it out for free or you 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 issue to the staff and that is it in the accounts. It doesn't appear as an asset. It appears as some an item that has been fully expensed out. Is that allowable really in Kenya? Uh, <laughs> I'm actually uh, not yet uh, uh, able to understand. Uh, if I okay. buy, if I buy a computer that is meant for the business, uh, if yes. It, it, if it is not personal, eh, you know you yes. can buy a computer and you don't have the, any intention of uh, having it in the business. If it is a personal item, you don't put it in the accounts of the business. Remember what we talked about the business entity concept. Eh? But if you okay. if you buy it 
and it is meant for the business, then you will have to debit the computer account. And okay. if you feel that the, that computer is no longer useful, yeah, you yes. give it out or you dispose, then you would have to credit the computer account to remove it from the books. Okay, Asante. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Malimu, I missed out something. Yes. Malimu. My question is, so you mean if I have three assets, I can't put them in, in one account called fixed assets account? They have to be in different accounts? Those accounts are normally maintained separately. Yeah? They are normally maintained separately. If each and every fixed asset, huh, it should have its own account because they are not the same they don't have the same value they don't work the they don't offer the same services they are unless the question sometimes they can give you a very simple question where they have put the figure together but if it is ledger accounts each and every fixed asset let it have a separate account the same way each and every debtor should have his own account each and every creditor should have his own account like that Malimu. Yes. Sorry, uh, I have to take you back a bit. Yes. On transaction on 15th May. Uh -huh. Was it affecting the bank? 15th, the one that we paid Juma. Yeah, we paid Juma 23,500 by check. The moment that word check is mentioned, eh, it is bank. Mm. But I'm not seeing it captured in your bank account. It, it was an omission, eh? We pay, okay, okay. We must have forgotten that, huh? We must have done what we call single entry instead of double entry. This is on 20, on 15. It was May 15. It was supposed to be there. We paid who? Juma. This is money moving out, 23, 500. I just hope we did not record it in the cash account. Eh? Actually, we made a, we only recorded in the Juma account, but we forgot to record it in the bank account. And uh, that those are some of the reasons as to why the trial balance might fail to balance. So, yes, actually, it was recorded here. We were supposed to credit the bank by 23500 but we, we didn't. Hadi Hapo are you able now to prepare the ledger accounts? I have a question, Mwalimu. Yes. Related to the computer, I yes. don't know whether we can get a question uh, stating that uh, maybe a computer was bought. Yes. But but not for business use, for personal use. So in such a case, would we leave out that entry uh, in totality or would we now uh, create a, a ledger for it? Is it a ledger? ledger. Would we create an account for it? Yes. Uh, we, we indicate it's a computer account. Yes. We, uh, we debit it. Okay, I have understood your question. Let me respond. Okay. Okay. One, if it is a computer that was uh, bought for personal use, it cannot be recorded in the books of uh, uh, the business. Anything that we open the ledger here, it is actually uh, an item that is in the business. So if the owner decides to go and buy a computer for his own use, then that one is not a business transaction. But now the problem can be if he has bought that computer using the business resources. Eh? He has used maybe the business cash or the, the business uh, money at the, in the bank to finance that. If the owner has used the business money to buy a personal computer, then automatically the amount of money that was taken from the business to finance that computer that amount of money would be considered as drawings. So if you buy a computer of 25,000 using business cash, then we shall go ahead and say that you have made drawings of 25,000. So we opened the drawings account debit by 25,000 and then we credit cash or bank by 25,000. 
but we cannot have computer account in the business records. So Mwalimu here, it's it's just about the wordings. You just have to read it, the quest, they read it and carefully and look at the wordings. The wordings are the ones directing you to which ledger account is affected for you to be able to do the double entry. Exactly. Okay. So so the drawings, Mwalimu, yes. are debited because drawings are, are an expense. Uh, let me not say that it's an expense because we shall move ahead and uh, find a place where we are going to record them. Mm. Drawings, they are normally debited because more or less the same, they are expenses because the resources of the business are being taken out. Huh? The resources, okay. of, the same way we use the business resources to, to, uh, to pay for the expenses, huh? to pay for okay. the expenses but now here we have financed something that is personal using the business resources so it is money moving out but it is moving out for something that is not related to business and that's why we normally credit that later on when we shall be preparing a statement we call the balance sheet or the statement of financial position we shall have to reduce capital by that amount okay okay in the ledger accounts, we debit the drawings account. But when we shall be preparing the end of year accounting statements, we shall reduce capital by the drawings amount because actually the capital has gone out of the business. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mwalimu? Yes. Uh, on, on 15th, yes. the transaction done on 15th, yes. does it also affect uh, three accounts? That is Joom account, yeah. bank account, and uh, discount received account. Discount received account, yes. So, I, I think we did not, we did not uh, enter it in the discount. You see here, we have got a discount received, eh? 15 oh. actually. Okay. Let me try to find out. We opened an account for discount received, I remember. Let us see. The, uh, this is a discount allowed. It is here, discount received on 15th. We credited the discount received by 1500. Okay, okay. Yes. So note this, discount received is an income, so we credit that account. Incomes or the accounts that normally bring in resources that are normally credited, and discount allowed is debited because it's an expense. This is an income because we have received uh, or it has reduced our expense, and the other one, it has actually denied an income to us. That is the discount allowed. So always discount received is credited, always discount allowed is debited. Always purchases is debited. Always credit is, uh, sales is credited. Purchases returns. Remember purchases is debited, but purchases returns is credited. Sales is credited. Sales returns is debited. So at this point, I want you to have those things at your fingertips. Increase in assets, you debit them. When assets are being acquired in the business, when they are coming into the business, you debit them. When assets are moving out of the business, you credit the account of those assets. The same case to liability or the opposite happens to liabilities. When liabilities are created, you credit the liabilities account. And when the liabilities are being paid, they are being reduced, you debit the accounts. Like that, like that. So if that one is well understood, do you feel like you have energy to go to errors? Yes. The errors and uh, the suspense account. Let me introduce that part maybe for 15 minutes or so.
So Malimu, this one, we can go ahead and do the ledger and the trial and send for you to check. Eh? Yes, you can uh, send me maybe at personal level. Eh? Either you can WhatsApp me at personal level. If you feel like uh, there's something that is not okay, you can send me so that I can see and uh, correct. But make sure you make your work to be neat. Eh? So that even okay. when you are marking, remember the figures, let them be on a straight line. Don't put a figure here, another one is here, another one is here, and always indicate the days. Once you have the days, you have indicated here on 9th, I will just go to the question and look on, on the 9th what happened. And then and when you just write here rent only, I might wonder this rent is for which date? Huh? Okay. Yes, yes. Just indicate. Well, yes. Uh, is it wrong to, when you, you're coming up with the accounts, is it wrong to have them side by side or they have to be It depends on the amount of space you have. If you ha hmm. your page is wide enough to accommodate them side by side, there is no problem. Okay. But if the space is not enough, don't squeeze them too much. Just let them have, uh, just have them just one on top of the other or one below the other so malimu i have i have a question a rather a clarification you can make yes there's something you said about uh balance the balance uh, brought down and uh balance carried down yes and how you treat that on the ledger Yes. Or on the trial balance, so yes. probably you can just make a statement so that I remember, okay. even as I as I work on the trial balance. Okay. So the balance carried down is actually the closing balance. Huh? It is the balance for the end of the year. But remember here, when the year is coming to an end, it simply means that the following day another financial year is starting. So the balance carried down and the balance brought down, they will always be similar. Only that they are recorded on the opposite side. So like for the example, this transaction or this account for Jacob, the debit side has got less than the credit side by 6,500. So the figure that I'm going to put here so that the two sides can be the same. So I'm going to put here 6,500 so that I can have 7,500 on the debit and also have 7,500 on the credit. This figure that I've put here for the two sides to balance, that is what we call the balance carried down. It is normally indicated on the side that has less. And now when we go to the next period, the same amount is going to be the balance that we shall start with. This is the closing balance. In most cases, we can say this is on 30th of May. And then when we open June 1, we have a balance of to Jacob of 6,500, which we are supposed to pay. You just record it as balance brought down 60, the same amount that was carried down, eh? 65. And make sure it is below the total. Eh? Make sure it is below the totals. So you just put, you must put double lines after the totals. So this 6,500 will be below the total like that. So when you are, when you are preparing your trial balance, you use the balance brought down. Eh? Use the balance brought down to indicate the side. Like in this case, the account for Jacob will be recorded on the credit column of the trial balance because the brought down is on the credit side. So the key thing that you need to understand, the carried down is normally indicated on the side that has less. Then the brought down now is recorded on the opposite side below the double lines. And when you are balancing, make sure that these figures are on a straight line. Eh? These totals just have them on a the same straight line. Don't have one very high and another one very low. Like uh, maybe you, you can have an account like what? Like, uh, let me go up. This one is more balanced. 
an account like this one. Eh? You can see this one, the credit side had a lot of transaction. Don't have your total here and the other one here. Just pull it down eh, up to this point so that they can be on the same horizontal line. Is it okay? Okay. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know, I've, I've been out of network a few minutes ago, but I just wanted to understand in the in the trial balance, uh, yes. can you mention something about uh, recording the discount received and discount allowed? What did you say about that? In the trial balance? Huh? Yes, the, yes. The, the your balances will tell you whether they, where they will be. Yeah? Obviously, you will balance them the normal way, like any other account, the carried down and the brought down. Eh? But it is obvious the discount allowed because it's an expense, it is going to be on the debit side. The discount received because we said any revenue is normally credited is going to have a balance on the credit side. Eh? But how to go about it is the same way. The same way you retreat maybe the purchases, so you have the side that has more and the side that has less. Eh? On the side that has less, you will indicate the balance carried down, and then the balance brought down will go on the opposite side, and then you use your brought down. But obviously, the discount allowed will have a debit balance brought down, yeah? and then discount received will have a credit balance carried down. And actually, at this point, you need to be aware that the assets, because when they increase, they are debited, always the assets are going to have a debit balance assets are going to have a debit balance because they are debited whenever they are increasing. The same case, liabilities, because when they are increasing, they are normally credited, you will find that the accounts of the liabilities are going to have a credit balance. They are going to have a credit balance brought down, and in the trial balance, those balances are going to be on the credit column. Similarly, the, the sales and purchases. Sales is normally credited, so it is going to have a credit balance and recorded on the credit column. Purchases, because it's always debited, is going to have a debit balance and debited in the trial balance. So those are the few tips you should also be aware of. Any account that is normally debited when it is increasing or an account that is always debited will always have a debit balance brought down. Any account that is always credited when it is increasing, then it will have a credit balance brought down at the end of the day. Is it okay? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. So accounting errors and the suspense account. So as we all know, if the ledger accounts have been correctly been prepared, if we prepare them in a very perfect way, we make sure that all the entries have been recorded in the ledger accounts where they belong. And also they have been recorded on the correct side. If that account was supposed to be credited, you have credited and you have credited with the right amount, you have debited the other one with the right amount, you have balanced the ledger accounts correctly, then obviously when you go to the trial balance, your trial balance should balance. And when we say here it should balance, we simply mean that the totals of the debit and the totals of the credit columns, they will have the same figure. And actually as a student, you will walk out celebrating that uh, your account has actually balanced and the assumption is that uh, everything has been done the correct way, which is also good, which is also good. So 
The trial balance as we are preparing it, among other uses it has, one of the key role it plays is to identify whether we made any error in posting and recording our transaction in ledger accounts. It is going to give us an indicator. Eh? It is going to act as an indicator whether everything has been recorded correctly because it will balance. And if it balances, then it is an indication that you have, must have done a good work. And if it fails to balance, automatically it is going to alert you that you have committed some mistakes. And these mistakes are what we are calling the accounting errors. So, the accounting errors, they are basically of two types. And at this point, let me say this, you can uh, prepare your trial balance, your ledger accounts and then extract a trial balance, but uh, your trial balance balances, yes, but uh, it does not guarantee you to say that you have not done any error. Your trial balance can balance, but you have committed some errors. At the same time, when your trial balance fails to balance, automatically you have committed some errors. So in this case, we have got two types of accounting errors. We have got the errors which do not affect the trial balance. These are errors which even if you have committed them, your trial balance will still balance. Even if you have committed them, your trial balance will still balance. And we have got another class of errors we call errors which do affect the trial balance. These are errors which the moment you commit them, automatically your trial balance will never balance. Automatically your trial balance will never balance. So we have got those errors you can do and still your trial balance balances. In this case, you will find that your trial balance will balance but with a different or a wrong amount. It is going to balance with something that is wrong, but it has actually balanced. If the correct balancing figures were 800,000, maybe yours has balanced by 750,000. Both the debit and the credit columns, they have 750, but they have balanced, but with a different or wrong amount. So note we have got those two categories of errors. So uh, as we go into these errors, I want you to have this at the back of your mind. The reason as to why the trial balance should balance is simply because of the double entry concept. That is actually the reason, the double entry, whereby a transaction has two effects or it affects two arranger accounts. And as it affects the two ledger accounts, one of those accounts should be debited and the other one should be credited using the same amount, using exactly the same amount. That is to say, if I've debited an account by 10,000, there is another account I'm going to credit by 10,000. If I've debited an account by 1,000, there must be another account where I'm going to credit by 1,000. If I've debited an account by 1,500, then there is another one I'm going to credit by 1,500, such that at the end of the day, the total debits, are exactly the same as the total credits. So the totals of the debit column of the trial balance should be exactly the same as the totals of the credit column of the trial balance. That is the reason. And there is no any other reason that makes the trial balance to balance. The total debits are exactly the same as the total credits, simply because each and every transaction, an amount was debited and that was also credited in two different accounts. That is uh, the underlying reason as to why it balances. So as we go ahead and discuss the errors which are uh, not affecting the totals of the trial balance, the reason as to why the trial balance will go ahead and balance, even if you have done some errors, it is simply because the mistake that you did on the debit side is exactly the same mistake that you did on the credit side. So it's like those mistakes, they were canceling out each other. Eh? You make a mistake on the debit, 
you make the same mistake on the credit so the two mistakes like they are cancelling each other like for example we have an error we call the error of omission when the transaction is completely omitted from the records that simply means that there was no account that was debited and there was no account that was credited by the same amount therefore the effect is the same on both sides so at the end of the day your trial balance will balance i don't want to go more than that i want to when we come eh, we shall have to finish this I think now we have to move at a higher speed and I want to make a very humble request here that uh, as much as you can, just try to attend the classes. The moment you miss one class, you find that you have created a gap. When you come in, in the next session, you will find that we are moving on from where we stopped and then you find that catching up becomes a bit of a problem. As much as possible, Try to log in, follow up, even if you are in a matatu or you are somewhere busy, just join the conversation so that you are all together and we move forward. Mwalimu? Yes. Uh, some of us, it's an, uh, we joined classes late. Yes. And I was going through LMS, there are some assignments you gave. Do we still do them and send you to check? So what you will do, eh? because you cannot be able to submit them, eh? mm. what you need to do, the moment you feel like you have done the assignment and you are now uh, ready to submit, you should uh, let me know. Eh? Just, okay. just contact me, tell me that uh, this is the assignment for topic two. I will uh, open for you to submit so that I can check it from there and grade you. So it's good to do them. It's good to do them. Just grade yourself. Okay. Lafu Malimu, there was a Saturday lesson. I missed it because I had to attend an urgent matter. Is there another Saturday lesson this Saturday? No, we have never had a Saturday lesson. Oh, okay, so thank you. Yes. So, Malimu, is this a lesson recorded because I missed a few minutes? Yes, it is recorded. It is recorded. I so, I can see it at the LMS. Uh, you are not in the WhatsApp group. What no. you, what you do? Eh? I will add you. I have your number, Doctor. I will add you yes. in the group, and then I will share the recording tomorrow on the group. You will get it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Karibu. Um, so I want to end the class at that point, unless somebody has a question. Thank you, Malimu, for your time. It's been worthwhile. Thank you. Okay. Sante Thank you. Thank you. Sante Sana. Bye bye, Mwalimu. Okay, so you have a pleasant evening and a very productive week. Bye -bye. We need it. Thank you. You too. <laughs>